Charles Martel holds a special place in my heart when it comes to Rise of Kingdoms because he is one of the first commanders that you got from the gold keys that was actually something special. Back in the day, Charles Martel was one of the reasons why so many early game players decided to go all in on infantry. And even still to this day, with Richard in KVK1, he can be quite a tanky commander to take down. And a lot of players feel that because of that, maybe infantry is the way to go. So today, we're going to take a trip down memory lane. And and I'm going to give you guys my updated guide for Charles Martel in 2024 and now I'm going to be honest he's not completely useless yet but he's definitely lost a lot of his luster unfortunately over the years but first what's going on guys cheers now like I said Charles Martel is not useless just yet in season of conquest there is still one pairing that I think you could potentially use in a pinch that could actually be pretty good and I'm going to show you guys some results later in the video but man back in the day this shielding factor felt substantial and a 30 percent all damage bonus for four seconds is quite a powerful buff especially if Martel is the primary commander because then the secondary commander is going to launch their active skill during that bonus and really hit like a truck his second skill though when expertise is really where he starts to shine because you get 40 percent of super tanky stats here for infantry defense and health are exactly what they love and the March speed here is quite rare I mean 20 percent March speed for infantry on and off Alliance territory is really something special his third skill was always relatively useless and his fourth skill giving you 30 percent more counterattack damage felt really good but over the years a couple of things have changed first of all running Charles Martel as a primary commander in season of conquest is typically not a great strategy now if you're in a C seed or D seed kingdom sure you might be able to make that work also if it's your first season of conquest then okay maybe people are a little bit more forgiving there maybe it's a little bit more common but once you start to get into your you know second third fourth season of conquest you're deep into the end game and if you see a Charles Martel you kind of just assume that that is a free to play player. They probably don't really know what they're doing because there's just so many better options available today. And so even though there's some synergy here with perhaps having a powerful secondary commander, like, I don't know, putting CPO secondary, then having the super powerful 2000 damage factor AOE hit them during that 30% buff, you would think that that would be a good strategy, but you're just going to be targeted so quickly in the open field that it's really going to hurt. And in a world where so much damage is dealt, with AOE and with single target damage, Huo, for example, is 2700. We have Justinian, we have Nevsky, we have so many powerful single target damage dealers these days. The damage that you're going to deal from your counterattacks is very, very low. It's such a small fraction of the total damage uh, output from most meta armies these days that bumping it up even by something as substantial as 30% really isn't that impressive and truthfully a 30 percent counterattack damage buff isn't nearly as good as the fourth skill on epic joan of arc she gives you 25 percent normal damage which includes basic attacks and counterattacks so i'd rather have purple joan of arcs for a skill than this one and that's really saying something so charles martel hasn't aged super well he went from being sort of a meta infantry commander to being a little bit more of a b tier right maybe b high c tier when we had harold come into the game typically players would run martel and harold together and you would have a very sort of tanky prickly anti-swarm army that had circular aoe if it was swarmed and there was just so much to love about this pairing but even harold these days is starting to feel a bit squishy he's not really meta anymore these damage factors really just can't compete but I guess the saving grace for Charles Martel is that he really just brings an absolutely insane amount of infantry stats we saw his second skill gave him 20 percent defense and 20 percent health now we see his double relic gives him 35 percent attack which he didn't have before and another 10 percent health for a total of 30 percent infantry health that is I mean that's one of the highest infantry health bonuses on any commander in the entire game and the fact that his active skill is a tanky shield with 30 percent all damage I mean in general like he's a very vanilla damage dealer that is still relatively tanky in the open field now like I said before he's not completely useless but slowly dealing damage over time and being able to tank hits really isn't the direction that the meta has gone and so with that being said what could you possibly do with Charles Martel like who could you possibly run him with and truthfully the answer is Liu Che 
I know that's kind of boring and I feel like we've been talking about Liu Che a lot on the channel recently but like he's so good for infantry that you really can pair him with anybody and if you run a Liu Che primary with Martel secondary then you're doing a couple of things first of all you're hiding your Martel so you're making sure that the enemy doesn't really know that you're running a gold key commander in season of conquest but Liu Che is bringing a lot of things to the table that Charles Martel needs first of all he's bringing AoE and this is not skill damage so for example if you have somebody like CPO or Guan Yu these commanders typically you know they have bonuses to their skill damage in a couple of different ways here and you want that synergy you want them to pair together but with Liu Che he doesn't have to be paired to a skill damage commander you could pair him wherever you want and one of the things that he's missing on his kit is infantry health so if you pair Liu Che primary with Martel secondary you're gonna have 55 percent infantry attack that is between the two of them you're going to have 40% infantry defense and 30% infantry health and 40% infantry march speed. So this is going to be an absolute stat machine. It is going to be juiced up. This is going to be one of the highest stat armies that you can run for infantry in the game. And it does have a five target 2250 aoe on liu che as the primary with a slowdown and you take 20 percent less skill damage which is nice you have some instant proc damage here in the form of smite damage and if you launch your extra basic attacks during the four seconds that you have the 30 percent all damage that could really hurt the enemy but don't just take my word for it we've run some tests through the simulator and you can see here that liu che with martel does actually beat nevsky joan pretty much every single time very consistently there's really no question here it's it's going to clap and in a dueling scenario you would expect huo to perform better than nevsky and even if you do that replacement the huo joan still loses every single time it performs slightly better i would say than the nevsky joan but the liu che martel gets a 6-0 win here for sure if we put it up against a cpo liu che i got two wins with the liu che martel and we got four wins with the the CPO Liu Che. So CPO Liu Che definitely that I mean that is the open field meta right now for infantry. So I didn't expect the pairing with the gold key commander to win, but I mean it did pull out two W's, which is okay. And it only barely pulled out a single victory against Liu Che Alex, which was kind of shocking here to be honest with you guys. Um, I think Liu Che Alex, because it has the shield on Alex, it's just a better 1v1 dueler than the CPO Liu Che. And then of course, if you put it up against any archer marches, it's going to get melted. So really it counters cavalry. It's countered by archers. That's exactly what you would expect from an infantry march. And the good news is that you are going to see a lot of cavalry in the open field in season of conquest. And so it's still usable, but there's really only one instance where I would use it. And that would be if you already have a good pairing for your CPO, such as Guan Yu with CPO, and you want to build a second infantry march, but you don't really quite have a good commander pairing for it yet, then okay, you can go ahead and you can pair your Martel with your Liu Che and keep your Guan with your CPO. And maybe you can make that work depending on your gear and things like that. Even something like Gorgo with Martel doesn't really seem to like move the needle. You would think that Gorgo is kind of like this normal attack damage, basic attack damage type of commander. Uh, but th there's just the synergy is not really here, right? Like you would think that the bonus to the normal damage here would also boost the counterattack damage plus the counterattack damage that you've already got boosted with the four skill it, it just it just doesn't work it's it's dealing damage too slowly and you're just too tanky and so while you could still run martel behind a liu che it's not really the martel that is doing a lot of the heavy lifting there it is the liu che and martel is just lending him some tankiness and march speed that's kind of it which is a bummer right because it was nice to have such a good early game commander that could sort of transition in this season of conquest you know around the era where Harold first came into the game and things like that like you had some uses for Martel but these days just the amount of damage that you get from these counterattacks and stuff it's just not enough and you know the, the kit here is just he's just a vanilla you know stat stick really and in 2024 uh, you know there's just less uses for Martel than there's ever been and so I really hope that you know just like in my Ethel fled video I really hope that we see something happen here with the relic where you know we get a third line where we get something else or we get you know more of these stats I guess I mean he already has so many stats he doesn't need more stats what he needs is more damage right we need you know maybe 10 percent all damage 20 percent all damage something like that because he's got everything else in the kit he's just not dealing damage man or 
give him like double his shielding factor maybe and just make him super tanky make it so it's like you can't crack him but he's just not dealing damage like maybe that would be his role I don't know but you know maybe give him 10 percent normal damage or something like that I I'm not really sure but there definitely has to be something done because again you know over time I like to revisit these old commanders these gold key commanders and I like to sort of you know theory craft and think okay well how could a new player still use these and I feel like every year I've been able to come up with something some advice or some guide or some strategy for these older commanders but when you compare them to the meta this time it's just not really there there's just very little that you can do with commanders like Charles Martel or like Ethelflaed that I talked about in a recent video now one place that he does kind of still shine is Sunset Canyon of course in Sunset Canyon you could set him as an off lane commander just to have a bit of tankiness and one of the things about Sunset Canyon is that tankiness and shielding factors specifically are very valuable because you can't refresh your troops in this game mode you are fighting to the death and any amount of damage that you shield from taking is troops that remain on the battlefield so in that way it's almost like healing in that as a result of the shield you have more troops available right and so in the sort of off lane here you could put a very tanky commander like Richard with Martel and that's just going to soak up a bunch of damage so that way the rest of your damage dealers can kind of do their thing as you can see here my Nevsky Joan and my Zhuge Liang with Herman they're in the back row they're protected from all angles by infantry units right and so if I didn't have Liu Che with Constantine here I could think about running a Richard with Martel still even in 2024 and that would be decent in Sunset Canyon Lost Canyon Canyon Clash whatever now if you were going to run him as a primary commander in Canyon and all you cared about was tankiness you you could consider running something like this where you grab a balance you grab desperate elegy you literally just max out the defense tree typically desperate elegy is garbage in pvp but in canyon you are fighting to the death every single time and so you do get a decent amount of rage every single turn here plus the rage that you get from burning blood and undying fury balance is a nice trade-off for your tankiness in general and then you grab hold the line you've got two points left over you put them in iron spear you should be good there you are going to see probably a, a decent amount of cavalry in canyon as well so you might as well grab that if you were going to use him in open field pvp in 2024 then this is probably Probably the talent build that I would consider um just max out the infantry tree just ignore things like testudo formation and medicinal supplies this stuff I mean testudo formation compared to what you get in the infantry tree like you might as well just go for stats at this point like reducing all damage for one second isn't that great um if you know I mean man you you could you could trade off the stats if you wanted to but I don't know it's just not, I don't know if it's that worth it personally I mean you're gonna grab the March speed anyway you need this for infantry and so if you wanted to you could try this as the defense tree the only downside with this is you only have one point in fleet of foot which I I would much rather have the March speed here than something like testudo formation that's just my opinion but yeah maybe the healing here for medicinal supplies would be nice because you're already getting the shielding so the healing on top of that could be good and then I guess the last talent build that I'll talk about here is sort of a city garrison talent build because I know in the early game a lot of players do typically put like a 5 5 1 1 Martel on their wall or a 5 1 1 1 Martel or something like that because they don't really have anything else to do and if that's the case then you could consider running something like this as your talent tree I feel like do you grab testudo formation or do you grab nowhere to turn it's hard to say probably testudo formation I guess because that one second from a rally perspective is a lot of damage whereas one second in a regular 1v1 in the open field is a lot less damage right because I mean it's 10 times more troops and then of course you don't need any of the March speed here you just grab the rage you deal extra damage to calves if you know the type of rally that's coming at you and you know it's archers or infantry then I guess you could remove this and put it over here for nowhere to turn for extra rage if you wanted to other than that you would just grab hold the line and strong of body this is really if you know that you're gonna have a lot of infantry in your city otherwise this isn't that useful but the good part is that call of the pack here is actually not infantry specific it's six percent defense I guess for all troops I mean it doesn't say anything about infantry at all and as far as I know it should be for all troop types and then of course you just grab a couple of these first talents on the garrison tree a lot of the other stuff here isn't super worth getting considering how many points you have to invest but anyway guys those are my thoughts and opinions on Charles Martel in 2024 it is unfortunate that such a powerful early game commander really has fallen from grace I mean he was once a, a commander that you might consider putting universals into like maybe you would consider putting 20 universals into him just to like push him to 5511 right like some players 
would consider doing that and i don't know if it kept track of what i've spent on him it looks like it has not unfortunately i, I maxed him too long ago but i i might have put like 10 or 20 universals into him back in the day i'm not really sure but man to have a commander that used to be so dominant and relevant for so many years to have him be in his current state is very disappointing and i hope that uh, rise of kingdoms can come up with a way to sort of buff him and make him relevant again because i do love charles martel he is you know i feel like we need more early game commanders that transition very well into the late game and charles martel was one of those commanders at one point but he doesn't really seem to uh hold that crown any longer unfortunately guys let me know in the comment section below what you think of charles martel have you still been using him lately have you found any use for him at all i would love to hear from you guys down there and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and of course drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it really helps this video get out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni i will talk to you guys again soon peace